budget beginner friendly e-bikes in North America to get you out on the trail e-biking. First bike on the list, it's out of stock. That's why it's number 11. It's 160 front, 160 rear, 27.5, comes with the Shimano E8000. X-Fusion, Suntour, Penda. This is the only bike I included that's over $5,000. I included it because it's such an amazing bike and value. It's 150 front, 140 rear. It's a full 29 inch bike. It has a respectable 625 watt battery considering the price. One of the most underrated pieces of kit in the e-bike world, this is the Sync Drive Pro motor. It's the e-bike motor built by Yamaha. Yamaha makes some of the best dirt bikes in the world, so this makes sense. The feeling of this motor, in my opinion, is a standout above all the others. You can stand out of the pedals and it gives you a really good support. Other e-bikes, I find myself sitting in the saddle all day. You can upgrade the battery down the line. You're getting the backing and the warranty of the biggest uh -huh. bike brand in the entire world. Geometry is dialed on this bike for sending downhill lines with confidence. It's got super long chain stays, but I personally find them to bunny hop really good. The parts on this base model are pretty decent. It's got four piston Shimano brakes, 12 speed Shimano gears. Second generation Trek rails on sale for $5,000. Let's clarify the Trek rail Second gen, first gen, identical bikes from 2019, 20, 21, 22, 23. I don't think this bike's gonna get a price hike. Let's talk about it. It's 160 front, 150 millimeter rear, full 29 inch bike. The Rail 5 comes with a 500 battery and the Bosch CX power system. You can upgrade to a bigger battery, a 625, and your budget is permitting. The footprint of the battery is really small, so you can pack it into this backpack super easy. The first and second gen rails, the older models, come with more traditional geometry, and some people may like that traditional geometry because the Gen 3 gets stretched out and becomes a long, low, slack truck like the rest of the bike world. I've personally spent some time aboard the first gen rail, and it's an extremely great trail bike. It's got a super short wheelbase and reach, so you can whip it around the trails. It's not ideal at high speed because the wheelbase is so short. So the Trek Rail 5 parts are a little disappointing. You got a lot of Bond Trager stuff, that's hit or miss. But it does come with four piston Shimano brakes and drivetrain. The rail's plenty bike to get you out on the trail at a pretty affordable price tag. This is the base model Yamaha YDX. On paper, this bike is rubbish, but Yamaha is the best dirt bike manufacturer in the world, I'm sure there's some secret sauce behind this bike. 05 or 07, that means it has the latest motor. It's the only difference. For this list of bikes, I'm looking at the base model YDX. It's 160 front, 150 millimeter rear, 500 watt battery, but Yamaha sells spare batteries, budget permitting. It's a little outdated rolling on 27.5 wheels in a nearly 67 degree head tube angle. Very short wheelbase will make this bike super poppy and playful. Fork on the base model is the Revelation. That's 35 millimeter stanchions, RockShox Deluxe, no piggyback shock. Interestingly, this bike comes with the base model, four pot Magura brakes, Shimano 11 speed. I haven't personally rode the Yamaha, but I guarantee you the motor won't disappoint. And there's got to be some secret sauce. Yamaha can't put out junk stuff having the best dirt bike brand in the world. We got the Marin Alpine Trail. This base model Alpine comes with the older E7000 motor from Shimano. It's a smaller battery, 500 watts. It's a pretty solid value in the parts department with the RockShox 35 fork, coil rear shock, four piston Shimano brakes, good tire combo, Asagai and DHR. It's got a 10 speed Shimano drivetrain. The geometry on this bike does not disappoint. It's three degrees slacker than the Yamaha with the same wheelbase. This bike wants to get rowdy with that head angle. Marin has a massive history in mountain biking. My first mountain bike was a Marin, so don't discount them. 
$4,600. It's 140 front RockShox 35 coil, 130 rear, an X Fusion rear shock, full 29 inch trail bike, a friendly 65 degree head angle. The optional battery sizes are outstanding. This is the only bike in the list with an EP8 motor. Norco is very good at price to value and they give you a better Shimano motor and way lesser components. Components are easy to change and motors are impossible to change right now. Single piston tech drill brakes. These parts aren't the greatest, but they will get you out on the trail. I found this bike on Jensen and I've rode the Norco site. The site's super capable, so you could expect this bike to ride like 150 millimeter all mountain bike. Next, we got the $4,500 Vetus E-Summit. This bike looks really promising. It's got 170 millimeters front, 167 out rear, rolling on mullet wheels. I love me some long travel e-bike. Yum, yum. Base bottle machine we're looking at comes with an E7000 motor, 504 Shimano battery. Come on guys, we can't complain too much. They offer a great value on an entry level bike. This bike chooses to give you nicer components, unlike the Norco. It comes with double down Maxxis tires, RockShox Domain, a super deluxe piggyback shock, four piston brakes. You know, personally, I'd rather have a nicer motor and upgrade the parts down the line, but this bike's gonna be jump on and shred. Next up, we got the Rosengal Mandate Shift. They're a French skiing alpine outdoors brand with a massive history in outdoor sports, and they're dabbling their toes into e-bikes with three models. They're 150 front, 140 rear. The base model, Dior 11, we're looking at here, comes with an E7000 motor and the infamous 504 Shimano battery. Common theme on these budget bikes. It's got standard geometry for trail bikes, 65 degree head angle, four piston Shimano brakes, really solid bike for the price. I've ridden one, the upper model one, and it rode really good. It did get a little bit overwhelmed on the gnarliest chunk, but it was plenty bike to ride standard trails on. I would totally recommend the Rosengal. I've rode it, checked it out, and it actually looks better in person. We got the High Bike Full 7 5.0. We got a shout out to High Bike. They're the original value e bike brand. High Bike has made a lot of bikes. You can find them all over the place for a really affordable price. The Full 7 5.0 is 150 millimeters front and rear, rolling on 27.5 wheels. The parts on this bike, they're pretty decent to get you out on the trail. Kind of interestingly, I could not find a geometry chart for the bike, but the price is always right and it gets you out on the trail. This is the Fantic FTX 1.5, $4,200. This is a 2021, so I don't think it's gonna go off of sale. Fantic is an Italian motorcycle brand known to make trials bikes and a bunch of other kinky stuff. It's 150 millimeter travel, rolling on 29 inch wheels. It's got the legendary Brose motor, same as the Specialized bike. This bike comes with a 625 watt battery. It's the only sub $5,000 bike to come with a 625 battery. The components on this bike, they're a little disappointing. It's got two piston SRAM brakes. It's got a RockShox Recon fork. That's 32 millimeter stanchions on an e-bike. Geometry on this bike is pretty old school. 66 degree head angle, super short wheelbase. So this is the Fantic 1.7. The 1.5 is gonna look very similar. This one just has more travel. The Fazari Wire Peak. Fazari is a North American bike brand out of Utah. The Fazari Wire Peak retails for $3,600. It's 150 front, 140 rear, trail bike, rolling on 29 inch wheels. It features, the, you guessed it, the E7000 and the infamous 504 battery. It's got really traditional geometry numbers, 66 degree head angle, super short reach for an extra large at 480. Super short wheelbase at 1230. It'll be really whippy snappy and short chain stays. The parts are lackluster SRAM guides, but at least they're four piston brakes. It comes with the RockShox Recon, a 32 millimeter stanchion fork, X-Fusion rear shock. Super interesting experience on the checkout on Fazari. They ask you for your dimensions. They want to get you on the bike that fits you right. Price doesn't mean value, so I made a list of the value bikes. I personally think long travel is more value because the parts last a lot longer on heavy e-bikes. 
the Otter E-Ride pants. These are the cheapest and one and only e-bike design pants. They're so smooth, you can wear them in a suit. They're amazing on your bike. Water resistant, tear resistant. Wear them around town. You won't be disappointed. Check the price.